So, with this one, I was called to prog uh, to clone this ECU. This is J part two. A. So, if you can see the moment to log in, you start to take the first token. So now I'm going to write the vena, uh, the EEPROM down. I'm going to read the EEPROM down so that I can be able to clone. So now I'll save the EEPROM uh, on my PC so that um, I'll be able to write the EEPROM to the other ECU. So with this software, what it does is it helps you to clone ECUs. Um, without opening them so all the jpack ecus it helps you to clone them without opening it this is you so what i'm doing now is i'm saving the eprom file that i'm i'm reading um normally when you are doing this ecu uh, cloning uh, one thing i like about this software is it allows you to read only uh, read only the eprom and now i'm done with the eprom and you can see where they fit in the os which is the flash so um, i have to save the flash number or the calibration number on the flash so that i can write it onto the other ecu so what this um, software does is it read the uh, so it reads the flash from a server and it clones the EEPROM because the EEPROM is the one that contains the security features like the scheme number or the scheme keys for the BCM to communicate with the ECU. So although you can see scheme enable or disable, it, it will not work unless you have the correct EEPROM data. So you can see I'm able to read the EEPROM um, and I don't know how they made it but every eprom that you read takes one token from you so the os is the uh, flash data so with the flash data the last two digits which is the alphabet shows the update so anytime you are doing this you copy the first numbers then you leave the alphabet behind so that you can get the updated calibration number so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to clone the second one and i've connected it on bench you can do it on the vehicle also but remember when the vehicle is having a secure gateway you have to bypass the secure gateway or else it will not allow you to use this software so this one i'm doing it on bench because the vehicle has a secure gateway and i don't have the bypass cable to do it on the vehicle so I'm going to read the EEPROM down in case the client wants me to rewrite the ECU. It is a sorry, it is a used ECU. So with this one, if you have the EEPROM, you can do a brand new ECU or a used ECU because the most important thing that you need is the EEPROM data. And you can see the OS is different from the first one. You can see the OS is different from the first one. So now you can see the VIN number. So I'm going to write the original vein number onto it you can see i'm getting this error is because of my battery voltage if you can pay attention to my battery voltage down there you see it's 12.2 so because of my battery voltage that's why i'm having all these errors popping up so what i'll do next is although the ac you see there it's in recovery state i can also recover the ecu normally this ECU, um, whenever it goes to recovery state um is the flash that is corrupted so let's say if you are doing programming and your internet went off or your pc went off and the ecu got um some malfunction you can also be, uh, do a recovery state because most of the jpack ecu normally when they are damaged it is their flash that is damaged so i'm trying to do recovering stage so what i'll do is i just need to stop what i'm doing and increase my battery voltage find a power supply that can supply me with um 13 plus volts so now after closing the software and opening it back now everything is okay and if i try it again without doing 13 volts so if you can see now i'm having 13 volts right 13.14 13.14 uh, volts 
and I'm still uh, sorry the voltage is still at 12 so now I have to stop and re change my voltage and anything I do it will, it will fail it will not be working so these are some of the challenges that you'll be having I don't know how or why they did it that way but it, it helps so even if you are doing it on the vehicle you have to have a battery maintainer on it or else it will not it will not be able to work as you want it to work so now with this one also whenever you are cloning these ecus you don't need their flash so you only need the eprom as i said first it's only the flash that you need so i'm trying to write it again and see if it will go through and pay attention so my battery voltage changes there's nothing going to work but if my battery voltage is at 30 now then that means i'll be able to write it so if you can see now that my battery voltage is at 13 i'm able to write the flash data onto the ecu so when i'm done with the flash i can rewrite uh, i can rewrite the eprom also but moreover you can see the vin number has already changed so that means i'm done writing the eprom so i'm writing the flash data and because the flash is a server uh, their software is a server based software so that means if you are writing any flash it will write the um, updated flash for you so all you need is a calibration data and you can use that calibration data or the calibration file to find for the updated one which they call the os so you can use the os number to find for the latest version and uh, with their software the moment you input the numbers it finds the uh, correct version for you and you can see i'm almost done with my um, flash writing so the flash writing is a let me put it it's a online thing that they do from their side so all you need to do is to have the right calibration number then you get the correct flash file so with this one i'm done writing the flash successfully for that exact vehicle so this same ECU can go for the V8, can go for the V6, so depending. So now that I have my correct flash number, let me identify it. And you can see my OS has changed. And my V number and everything is perfect back in line. So the voltage was the reason why I was getting those errors that when I'm trying to write, it wasn't going through. So now that I'm done, the next thing I'll do is I have to put the ECU on the vehicle. I'm hoping they'll be able to do other ECUs apart from the PCM. But for now, it only works with the PCM. So now that I'm done, I close the software to open it up again and make sure that I'm having the right information in it. So with this one, now that I know my errors, let me identify the issue once again and make sure the OS, the V number and everything is perfect. And anytime they take a token from ECU, from an ECU, what it does is it will cause it down. So anytime you bring that exact ECU, the software knows the exact ECU that you are using and knows that oh, this is you have already been charged for token already. So... You can see my VIN number and everything is so the work done now the car is running and everything is perfect thank you for watching subscribe to my channel for more videos so you can see the car is running and that's the old control unit